There were many games which N64 owners were jealous of PlayStation owners for. Sure there are the classics such as Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII, but if there's one standout title that we were absolutely begging for, the title was Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Hmm. Jokes aside, I was actually quite a Ridge Racer fan. It was really Type 4 which hooked me into the game, and once you get your head around its unusual power slide mechanic, you can start to appreciate the game for what it is. Four years after the launch of the original Ridge Racer on the PlayStation, N64 owners finally got their hands on Ridge Racer 64. If like me you were just expecting a port of the PlayStation game, you may be in for a shock, because the game wasn't actually developed by Namco. Development fell to NST, who were a newly built internal studio at Nintendo with an aim to create games to appeal to the Western market. They didn't even share Nintendo of America's main offices, and they were in fact based in the building next to them in Seattle. Ridge Racer was to be their first game as a studio, and you can tell they worked overtime here to make one hell of an arcade racing experience, which for the console is almost as good as it gets. Ridge Racer 64 is all about speed, arcade, quick play fun with enough depth thrown into the mechanics to add some longevity. One of the key points to this game was that NST added the drift modes from the previous Ridge Racer games and allowed you to pick and choose which style you wanted to race under. If you're a newcomer to the series and you can pick the new drift mode designed exclusively for this game which is near perfect and makes throwing your car around corners a total dream. The main focus of the game isn't its championship mode, which in typical fashion sees you race a series of courses and when you've won all of them, you advance onto the next set of ever more challenging laps. Once you win a series, you also have a very cool mode where you race against a single car and if you beat it, you unlock it to use in the championship mode. This means that your time will be divided up between winning a series of races in the championship mode before returning to the car attack mode to unlock your next motor to use in the harder class. Well before you notice the sharp handling however, you will instantly get a fantastic sense of speed as the frame rate is rock solid and everything runs smoothly and slowdown is non-existent. This is enhanced even more so when you get to unlocking the later cars in the game's roster. There are over 25 cars to unlock in the game, but you might be disappointed to find out that there are only 3 tracks to race them on. Now Nintendo would have you believe that there are in fact 18 courses, however there are 3 tracks, each with 3 routes through them, and also a myriad variation of each. For me personally this was very disappointing, even more so when 2 of the 3 tracks are from the previous Ridge Racer games, and so there's only one new track exclusively for this title. Honestly no matter how many lighting tricks or slight deviations from the main route they take, they do all fill the same 3 courses and for a game with so many cars it's just a shame they didn't see a need to bump this up to a higher number. That being said though, what is here is very good. You have an arcade racer which is blisteringly fast with a good selection of cars. The graphics have taken a slight bump down in order to maintain a quick frame rate, and in comparison to the PlayStation versions of Ridge Racer, the cars do look a little blockier, as the tracks and cars do also, because they have a lower polygon count. Personally, I would have liked to have seen them make use of the expansion pack, which was dropped during development, and I think this hurt the overall polish of the game, but for a new studio and team, you can't help but be impressed with what they came up with, especially given that this was their console debut. Rounding off the package of the game comes some crisp and clear audio, with the effects sounding almost as good as many first party Nintendo games. The music was all produced externally, which given the small size of the studio was understandable and it thankfully fits the game perfectly, and the upbeat tempo of it adds to the sense of speed within the game. It really is tricky to find fault in Ridge Racer 64. Far from being a lazy port that many of us expected, it instead turned out to perhaps be one of the best Ridge Racer games ever made. The sense of speed, the large number of cars and the multiplayer mode combined with the overall polish of the game is second to none and it's just a shame that the lack of tracks will mean that many of us gamers could easily blast through this game in a full weekend. But the more I think about it, isn't it exactly what an arcade racer is supposed to be? A pick up and play experience to kill some time. But I want to know why you think people still play arcade racers these days when for the same price you could have a more fully fleshed out racing experience. Let me know why you think this is in the comments down below and until next time.